Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hello, I'm Matthew Pison, and I'd like to congratulate you on downloading this executive version of the Otaku Generation podcast. It's been carefully engineered by the finest of podcasting technology to fit perfectly in your MP3 player and play back with the ultimate in podcasting sound reproduction. Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for Otaku. Our podcast brings all the Otaku to the yard. Have you ever wondered what Jefferson is doing when he's not here? Uh, the bigger question though is do you really want to know? Maybe he's a secret agent sent out to promote Doctor Who to the undeserving masses. We are still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where there's no Jefferson around. Wait, there's no Matt either. I wonder what they're up to. It is show number 581 for August 3rd, 2016, with this week's topic, Flying Witch. And now, some of our favorite Japanese foods. Yakitori, which I just had for dinner. Uh, Natto. McDonald's cheese pork cutlet burger, okonomiyaki, and pickles. And now, a person who's hungry, thanks to me, Alan Chase. Yeah, but I don't know about Nato. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, you, you, you let me make the list. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the first mistake. You, you, you get the menu. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Alan. <laughs> and uh, I guess the rest of you should introduce yourself. Abbreviated Matt. cast. Yeah. Catch up. Uh, Bryce and Paul ketchup also known as Botas and Matt is missing uh, he bought a new house so uh, he's he decided to start the moving process today um, where's yeah. his priorities honestly yeah, yeah no understandable what's fresh what's bang what's squeak with the UG crew indeed so what did I do I did a uh, very needed upgrade to my laptop I it took me a while to dig into the thing I almost was ready to like call Botas like I need help but I figured out what the problem was. Um, it's surprising how these very small short screws can really um, apply a lot of tension because I thought I got all the screws and I'm like, no, I don't know if I need that one. And I'm like, Mary. And I'm sitting there trying to take the back off this thing and uh, for the longest time I couldn't. And then I realized I guess I need to take that screw out. And then everything else was easy from that point. So um, so I upgraded my hard drive to not a bigger drive, but just a solid state drive. And uh, I'll tell you, I know it makes a difference. Um, it, it's definitely not pissing me off in the ways it would used to piss me off. But, but it's pissing you off in new ways. <laughs> no, I, you know, I just said this to Bryce a moment ago. Um, it, it's one of those things where... It's not that like the speed difference is surprising. It's just that it meets my expectation of it working without much thought. And I, I guess I had that same kind of experience on, on my main system. And now that I switched this thing up, fantastic. So now I have a spare terabyte drive um, that I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. I mean, I, it's probably good if I get an enclosure and make it a spare, you know, drive to have around. But uh, yeah, so I did that. That was really fundamentally the most important thing aside from some Oticon prep work because uh, it's happened in a couple weeks myself and Matt will be there um, I don't know about the rest of you Jefferson probably is going to be there um, and we'll be we'll be uh, running about uh, I was not intending to do any kind of uh, meet up or anything but if anyone feels that's important reach out um, you know there's a bunch of ways to do that and then uh, we could probably make do a dinner thing so um, yeah I don't know I think that's that's good enough for me I watched more some Manchu um, I, I think it's pleasant I like it uh, the cool. the concern you had 
um, writes about the sort of goofy ratio, the goofy face ratio, <laughs> um, is really less of an issue on the fourth episode and beyond. That's good. Well, I shouldn't say and beyond, I'm assuming. Um, I think it's valid that what I was saying last week, it is an emotional component, and every once in a while there'll be another character who has an emotional moment and I'll get similar kind of goofy face um, for a brief moment. So um, that one main character, she's not really doing that, at least in the fourth episode. Um, I would say maybe maybe one percent of the whole episode. Uh, if you want to exaggerate that, maybe three percent. So what are they doing? Is that like a scuba diving club? Like what's the? Yeah, th- okay. that's exactly it. Okay. Uh, they're just they're high school kids, and it's a scuba diving club. And um, you know, the one thing that's really kind of subtle about it is there's a moment that on the surface does not look like there's much going on you think what the hell's going on everyone's silent people are looking at each other and then i realize that there is a relationship to the way scuba divers function and communicate in water and so once i realize that moment after the fact i go oh that was really subtle and that was really brilliant and so I, i'm i'm hoping or expecting maybe there's going to be more moments like that um so no that was it that's what i watched uh aside from topic and um yeah i thought it was good i'm going to continue to watch it and, and go from there so that's it for me both us what about you Okay, so I <laughs> continued to watch one more episode of The Morose Mononokian by mm-hmm. Napian. And this is the episode where they first go into the underworld. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of really very disappointed with how they handled it. Plus, uh, there's this weird tone shift with this episode. Like, up to this point, the Mononokian, I mean, the. Um, the yokai. Yokai, thank you. Yeah. The Yokai are sort of like these weird, fuzzy bloated monster creature things that aren't like humanoid they're just these strange things right there's one that's introduced that does directly talk but most of them just serve for these cute things that the Mononokian was able to interpret and or okay there was one that was kind of humanoid but it looked a bit like one of those buddhist statues not like really a buddhist statue i'm not quite sure what they are they're mm. the, these statues that are i think i know what you're talking about no i'm <laughs> not talking about like the f- not like the fat like Buddha um, I wish he said Buddha but it's not really a Buddha I guess it's like a monk like I know I've seen something like it it's like the stone sort of pillory-esque thing but it's actually like got a basic body and really basic face type of thing I okay. think I've seen it but the point being is um, there's one that is kind of like a person but at the same time not quite like it doesn't have a face and the point still being that up until this point there's a certain way, a tone of the show, and then when they went to the underworld, one, almost all of the yokai are either humanoid or at least anthropomorphic, like in clear way. It felt like a very discount version of the alternate world of the boy and the beast, except a lot mm. more violent, since in this episode, mm. one of them thinks that the assistant of the Mononokian, the uh, protagonist, mm-hmm. has stolen something, and near the end of the show, he's trying to, like, cut his arm off. <laughs> so it's like, what the hell happened? This show, like, completely just does not feel like it was feeling before mm-hmm. in this episode. Do you think they're trying to go down, like, an action route with this? Like, they're, are they trying to turn this into, like, a shonen series? Or was it... Uh... Or it wasn't, like, a big fight type of okay, deal. It's more like, like the protagonist trying his best to avoid getting his arm cut off, but okay. it's not like he has fighting power. It's more just I got saved in the last mm-hmm. minute by the fluffy thing from the first episode. Okay, yeah. Attacking the face of the mm-hmm. big, burly, bear-like guy with <laughs> the... Yeah. So, but it's just this whole, um, like, one, the violence of the underworld, and two, that most of them were just pretty much, like, people with, like, a currency and all sorts of other crap, and just being, mm-hmm. like, people on the underworld, except looking, like, furries and other stuff at times. Right, Some of them right. were completely, no, like, no, people. No. So, so you'd been hanging around for this episode to see if they handled the underworld. So based on this, continue, or is it... I'm um, uh, dropping at this point, because, gotcha. again, the tone shift Yeah, is, gotcha. I also continued watching Orange, and I'm probably going to drop this as well. It wasn't as severe an issue, but there's a couple of things that I just aren't really caring for. Like, in the future version, this is the one where the high school girl is receiving letters from her future self right. about one of the friends mm-hmm. is going to. Well, the future self, she's married to one of her friends, and she even has a kid. And they're spending a bit more time with the future stuff, like the their life and whatnot of the characters in the future 
And it seems like she's relatively happy or is happy. And again, she's married to one of her other friends. She has a kid. But then she's saying these layers that are, one, not just trying to save the life of this other person, but almost make it seem like she wants her past self to instead be in this relationship with this other boy, which kind of feels really messed up. Hmm. And two, the fact that the other boy that she wants to serve a save the life of and two to go out with is a bit of an idiot and a jerk. Yeah. Like he starts saying like this other girl, even though the protag the main female protagonist is a making lunches and two doing really early phone calls to wake up this boy. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, but there's this other girl that's really cute looking. It starts going out. I mean, it's just like gotcha. just way too much high school kid drama type stuff or high school whatever mm -hmm. that just it's kind of like really irking me too much i mean the protagonist mm -hmm. is a bit too wishy-washy and too much like focused on this guy that i don't understand why yeah so i'm probably going to drop that it's too bad i thought i had a good concept of the idea of like trying to change the future yeah these letters from her future self but yeah the, yeah the, the I, this has been on my list to check out a couple more episodes of but the first one really didn't grab me it might be worth, like, like there's nothing else this season, but there's 4.5 things I'm watching, yeah. so there's just way too many yeah. things. Um, Mob Psycho, Psycho, I heard Bryce that you said that you watched Up more three, of it. Yeah. Okay. Of it, yeah. So you've seen the fact that they've reached 100. Yeah, I did. I didn't know it was going to happen so fast, but it was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so definitely really, really loving that, especially what they're doing with the animation. Have you been continuing to watch it, Paul, or not? I have, Yeah. yeah. Just the fact that they're not just sticking with like regular animation at times when there's emotional moments, they switch to different animation styles, like almost like paint on glass and whatnot type look briefly. So what we haven't had is like sort of like the super trippy over the top stuff we had in the first episode, but I haven't been minding because each episode of that show has felt really different. Yeah. I mean, they're not they aren't falling into a rut yet, so they're it. it I, I like the variety, yeah. and also it's nice they backed off Reagan. So I haven't watched four yet. I don't. Remember he's, the, he's the he's the, the, the fraud. He's the, the, the he's con man psychic. Fraud, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's uh, very prominent in episode one, episode two, or th and three. He plays a part, but he's not like the uh, on screen all the time like he was. He's just another character in his life. He's not. Yeah, like, he's and a, and so and that worked pretty well, I thought. So you know, this is definitely on my to watch list. Help out. Um, the 91 Days. I have watched more of 91 Days. I'm up to episode 3. I think I can't remember if I've watched 4 yet. Or not. I think I'm at 4. Okay. Yeah. I think the animation or production quality dropped a little bit in episode 4. Like, not super terrible, but just feels like they have mm -hmm. a bit less budget to me. Yeah. But so so my, my big problem with this show is Fango, who is... Yeah. The, he is an anime character in, like, this serious mob <laughs> drama. So he's, like, this over-the-top, masochistic, wacky action anime villain. And everybody else is, like, a straight-up mobster. And he just doesn't fit the tone that this show otherwise is trying to achieve. And, you know, twice they missed killing him off. I mean, come <laughs> on! I just, I don't, like... I don't understand why the family he's part of, the Orca family, puts up with him. Like, he, like, walks in on a meeting of them and the, the Don and, like, just acts like a total asshole to everybody. Like, why is he allowed stabbed, to do that? He stabbed yeah. him with a fork. Is I he mean. that good? Like, they yeah. need to have him on his side? Like, maybe you should just take this guy out because... <laughs> yeah, he seems definitely more a like liability. a liability. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um... I was, I'm, the direction they went in with it in episode four was interesting. I didn't expect that. Like, I don't know if I want to go too deep in details, but, but like, it's a, yeah, but it's silly. Like, that's the one where you have the Mexican who like bear hugs people to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember yeah, the, yeah, them yeah, going yeah, on the run. Like those two yeah. characters, like the one you know, um, Nero and the, the main character. I just didn't know they were going to go in that direction with it. But I'm just, I guess I'm sort of just to see where it's going to go. But I felt like the, the yeah the Mexican felt he like he felt like too much like a supernatural villain. Because he took a lot of gunshots at one point yeah. from Nero. He took, like, three bullets to the, like, something. I don't know what he was... I was thinking, say. like, be, like, he had, like, not quite bulletproof, but, like, it's not really a poncho. I'm not quite sure what that would be yeah, called yeah. that he had. Like, maybe that had some sort of protective, like, maybe, mesh yeah, that's or something. Maybe, yeah. But that was a bit weird. But he did get taken down with the shotgun, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, like invulnerable he was just right, right, yeah. yeah I mean I, one of the things I really liked about the first episode is they just like straight up offed a lot of people who had like real <laughs> character designs and everything and they looked like they, they could stick around but it seems like we've got a bunch of people who have plot armor which is not quite as much fun in my opinion for this type of show mm. yeah yeah 
But so, they're selling so many like proper yeah. characters, so it's a certain yeah. point they couldn't do that every episode. Well, maybe okay. <laughs> they could kill Fango. I really wouldn't mind. <laughs> but but I mean, I'm, I'm continuing for the moment. I mean, I, it's sort of I've it, this is sort of lost my hope of being like a great show. But it's it's so far reasonably entertaining. I mean, it's got good good sense of drama and pacing. At least through three, I haven't seen four yet. Yeah, I'll con- I'm personally probably going to watch it to the end, but I agree it's not quite as good as I was hoping. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll definitely prefer Bacchano to this. I mean, that's a different type of different show. Different show, but, totally, but yeah. But it does have a sort of, like, similar environment and world I mean, yeah. in a certain way. And I mean, the look co- of the characters is very evocative yeah. of Bacchano, I think. So. Yeah, and, and also the color palette, I think, as much as anything. Yeah, but that definitely has a bunch of supernatural elements where this is trying to be a truly serious show or realistic to a certain degree but at the certain degree it does have these kind of goofy elements yeah. at least with episode yeah, 4 they, they didn't quite take it all the way through and I think it's a squandered opportunity yeah. I hope they get back to the through the relationship between the three main families like because the fourth episode didn't really touch upon that stuff at all it was just them on the run mm-hmm. so I don't want that to go away I was interested in the relationship those three families have with each other and if they're going to go out all at war like what's that going to be like because like the opening like if there are scenes from the anime it looks like shit really goes down later on but yeah. I guess we'll see I don't know. Yeah. just have to keep watching and find yeah, out I will, I, I will keep watching this for sure um so, did any, either of you watch any of the Thunderbolt saga, or whatever it was called, not saga, the um, the yes. puppet one? Oh, no, uh, no, no I, I forgot to watch that. That's still on my list, but I, I will... Be uh, I will be checking it out. Have you? Have you? Did you watch some more? Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch the end because I would like us to do it to the top as a topic. Okay. Um, it's sort of just more from a story standpoint, sort of a silly fantasy type world. I don't mean silly as in that's light hard. Like they do kill off quite a bit of like characters. Uh, I find this. Uh, I think this might be actually some sort of interesting sort of psychological study or whatnot. And almost the whole um, McLeod's. Um, from Scott McCloud's The Understanding Comics, the whole mm-hmm. sort of like whether or not you can associate with the character or not. Like, I'm not feeling like I actually really care for any of these characters, but not in like a way that I dislike any of the characters, just the fact that as puppets, and as I mentioned last time I talked about, that since they don't really have facial expressions the way that you'd have with an animation or even like claymation mm-hmm. or some sort of other form of where you can really be emotive because I mean this is puppets like real time it's not hard to do stuff right like um, like enjoying the show but I don't really care quite what happens to any of the characters so I'm not really as feeling like I sympathize with any of them or really feel that way but I'm enjoying watching it more from like just the technique of mm-hmm. storytelling and just because the puppets themselves are really beautifully made but also the story itself is sort of like fun in a way of almost like watching a really detailed let's play to a fan to a, some sort of like RPG mm-hmm. or JRPG because that's what the story is very much like to just have this party of like sort of weird rogues and sort yeah. of go, mm-hmm. grouping together to like fight against this evil guy who's collecting swords and mm-hmm. whatnot. but that being said, I've been enjoying it enough that even though I'm mainly watching it for the sake of just us being able to deal with it in the future as a topic, mm-hmm. um, it's actually probably the second one that I'm most looking forward to watching outside Mob Psycho 100. Okay, cool. Even with the whole thing that I just mentioned where it's hard for me to directly emote with the characters. It's more just me enjoying it from a pure like execution, yeah, 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 execution yeah. Stadium point. And I've also been watching Planetarian. I forgot to mention that last show. It's mm-hmm. only five episodes long, though, and we're yeah. going to be doing it, it as a topic. Is it coming out one per week? Yes, so yeah. far. How's it's, that turning out? I'm enjoying it, but it's not going to be like it's going to load her mind or like the most <laughs> emotive thing. It's pretty much just that one guy and the android girl. You might be annoyed oh. with the android girl, possibly, because she is a bit of a... Chatty Cathy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but... Again, it's only, if this was a full season, I don't think it would work. But since it's only going to be five episodes, it works from the standpoint of the story about this guy in the world where most of humanity is dying off because of this toxic rain and mm-hmm. these sort of, like, all mag or, like, sort of robots that are meant to just defend cities and kill people on sight. Like, humanity's just left in shelters or scavenging. And since you've only got these two characters besides flashbacks like the flashbacks show other people but even that's kind of limited 
Um, so this is key. Is it a romance? Is it a tearjerker? Where are they aiming with this? I think it's supposed to be more of a tearjerker. Like, it's not really a sad girl in snow because, like, the android isn't directly sad, but it's that sort of thing where it's a tragic She's heroine. She's pathetic, yeah. Yeah. And to my understanding, like, the last... Like, I've read the Wikipedia article, so, like, the android girl doesn't really... isn't expected to make it in the yeah, end. Gotcha. Like, sacrifices herself for the guy or something like that. Uh, okay, sort of the deal. usual sort of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. That's a bit of a spoiler, even though the last episode hasn't ended yet, but... <laughs> but, you know, it's so hard to spoil these incredibly predictable series, though. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, maybe there's people who'd be... Well, yeah. But, that being uh, said... Did you say you wanted to do this for a topic at some point? Yeah, I mean, again, it's only five episodes long, so I've seen no reason five why or, not... Five or six? Five. It's so, have five. you seen through four? or f- Yeah, four up to four. Out? Okay, so, as soon as, so once it comes out, I guess I'll marathon it to... Yeah. Uh, to okay. catch up because I, I, I was not I was a bit uh, underwhelmed by that first episode it was right, yeah. b- better than the other key uh, train wreck that was out this season <laughs> uh, rewrite that was the other oh. the other key one. Oh, that one that was a complete mess of storytelling oh, so that was so bad <laughs> and also I'm continuing to watch read zero which I'm definitely going to watch to the end but I have mm. a bit of a sense like it might have jumped the shark like it's gone mm. like really kind of crazy as far as stuff like there's a re- revelation about pluck the sort of fairy thing Mm-hmm. That's just kind of like what the hell's going on, and there's this giant surf like flying white whale thing that erases people from history. Uh, uh, come on, yeah. yeah. That, I, so I had to stop. Wa- so I this I'm still watching it, but it's like a painful slog at this point. You know that just is not the sign of a good series when you like have to force yourself to watch it because you're sure <laughs> there's probably going to be like one or two good moments in there, and you want to see how they handle it. But man, the, the, that protagonist is so terrible. The like, one advantage is that he's died a lot. You gotta yeah, see him like die. The, in thing, that. the thing is, he hasn't been learning from experience. So I mean, despite all this, so he's he's a terrible dramatic character. I mean, like a good dramatic character is like pulled between two different things, two dramatic poles, and he isn't. He's got one dramatic pole, and basically, is he currently acting like a jerk or is he not acting like a jerk at the moment? And so that's basically sort of his range of expression, and there was like a, a stretch in there through the first season uh, where they backed off from that a bit and it looked like he'd be a reasonable character but no they are they are doubling down hard on man this guy is an asshole so uh, you guys aren't really selling me on continuing to watch this yeah. <laughs> I was sort of like oh you can tell you it's good but then yeah. I guess <laughs> well the thing is it has such good moments but you know this is a hard series to recommend mm-hmm. um I, I don't know. And you should check out a couple more. I mean, you really should watch at least a little bit more okay. to, see, to see what you think. Okay. But I think um, they're kind of starting to, like, pile on these elements. There are just too many yeah, stuff. It, it's, that... it's, it's kind of falling apart. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to finish it up. If it, if it goes longer than this current core, that'll be it for me. I don't think I can make it more than 26 on this. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping at this point now that does end with this season, because I'm watching it more just to see how they conclude things. But that being said... They've dumped way too many elements. There's no way I think they they can properly tell an ending in one more like season. But that being said, as I mentioned, they've dumped like too many really just wacky what the hell sort of stuff in this well, last and couple like, episodes. All this, all this, com- all these complications with like the four other candidates for the rulership. I mean, you know, that's just a mess. They yeah. haven't even done anything with them for the last well, like three episodes. Well, that's it. well I, in episode seventeen, didn't they play a fairly major role? Oh, that was where Wang he, where he to, was like, going around to all of them, and they were like, you know, teaching him life lessons. Oh for yeah, no particular reason. And then he acts like a petulant jerk. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that moment. Yeah. I was just but, but, remembering but, but, but the I mean, giant like, whale thing. But, yeah, <laughs> but, like, from, an, from like, an execution perspective in terms of, like, putting this story together, uh, you know, that that's all noise. I mean, you know, really... Um, and so this this sort of tell, says to me this is a light novel adaptation. They're just, like, trying to toss all this sprawling stuff in there. And they haven't done the selection that would be needed to, like, fit this into whatever time they have to fit it into the season arcs. So this is a failure of uh, series composition. Yeah, I have to double check. I thought it was supposed to be an anime original for some reason right really? now. Really? Well, it, it, is, it is possible. It is a, why is it like not while I just checked? It's, there's like eight volumes of it. Oh, yeah, so yeah. it's a light novel? Yeah, the Japanese light novel series. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah okay. I mean, it just has that, I mean, there's so much story here, and the way they're trying to just, you know, c- catch every precious drop of story so it <laughs> makes it onto the screen. 
but yeah. and, and it's a shame because there really are there's like there really is like a backbone in this show which is interesting and cool and like they pull off individual moments of sheer horror really well and I think like you know the, the main character being an ass and his you know complete incompetence is meant to sort of show these are the consequences of it but we aren't getting the growth to match that right uh, and they also spend just so much time with him on the screen being annoying <laughs> you know you don't have to do it for like three episodes in a row to make the point you know that that's I mean if you go back and watch Groundhog Day yes you know Bill Murray is a jerk but you know not for like every moment he's on the screen there's like a growth arc there yeah and yeah. we aren't seeing the growth arc yeah, instead we're getting all sorts of weird, wacky-ass stuff. <laughs> or if you watch 17 and you've seen the giant monster thing attacking the caravan or not, did that uh, happen yes. yet? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So just... But then there's another reveal on top of that, again, with Pluck, which is kind puck, of... Puck, 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 yeah. That's... I mean, so that being said, I'm going to definitely finish this core out, and I think we're going to still do as... Or I, well, it's going to be kind of difficult to do as a topic because it takes like five episodes just to go through one of these mini arcs. Yeah, well, we can. We'll, 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 I guess we can decide on that yeah. later. But if we've both gone through the pain of watching it, yeah. we'll probably <laughs> spread the pain around. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, the and the pain. other thing is, this is a popular show. I mean, if you look at like there are a hell of a lot of pictures of people play, uh, cosplaying as Rem and Ram, mm. uh, the the maid characters. And so on. So I think it's it is being well received. So and people are enjoying it. And you know the sort of the hor- the horrific pain we're experiencing <laughs> is perhaps not everybody is like feeling the same you know trauma. The real shame of this is that there is so much potential. They just yeah. are. And and, and, the, and the potential actually does show up on screen as well. I mean, there have been three episodes that have been good. Okay, we should certainly stop talking about this and move yes, on now. Yes, yes we need so. to stop talking okay. about it. But the, the one thing about it is don't confuse just because the outfits are well-received that the show is well-received. Mm. People cosplay as things that they don't necessarily like, but b- because they like, oh, that's an outfit yeah, I can fair do. Enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so move it on from yeah. that. Uh, might as well go uh, price. price. <laughs> All right, I'll skip the anime I watched where I talked about them. Um, so, this is weird, but uh, after watching that T. Gray Man uh, Hollow. Does he watch more of it? No, but, oh. it, inc- <laughs> but it, it inspired me to go back and start reading the manga again. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Because I was very intrigued by that. I forgot about. I don't know if I didn't read it before or what, but that last scene, which you, it, you do, I probably don't remember, it didn't probably significantly mean anything to anybody because if you hadn't seen the Gray Man, but it kept me intrigued. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go, I want to check this back. I want to check this out again. So um, I just bought like, the Kindle versions of uh, all, like, there's like five volumes out that I haven't, uh, that I'm behind on because it did go on that really long hiatus because the manga car was sick. Um, and I've been starting to read a few chapters of it and I like it. I, I forgot, like, they do action really well, I think, in the manga. It's, you know, it's, brutal violent the monsters are very like scary um it does have the goofiness that not during the battles but like certainly between like the light harmless there's definitely a lot of goofiness which i guess something we commented on uh from the show um i just have sort of forgotten that <laughs> um but it's interesting though i like it i like where they're going with it um i'm interested to see uh there's like a whole series of chapters it's called like the search for alan walker part one two three and they could throughout and i was looking at the chapter names going forward and i'm like what so does he disappear like what's the deal with him because he's the main character why are they looking for him so i don't know i just find it kind of interesting um and i liked what i read before <laughs> so i'm gonna give it a, i'm gonna give it a try like like i said the anime did not really do anything for me as like as something i would want to watch it but um the manga they're liking yes yeah yeah the only thing that episode of the anime convinced me was that to finally take d gray man off of the list of shows i might get around to watching someday no yeah i don't know if i i never i can't really speak to the in reading the original anime i, I haven't yeah. seen any of it um but i remember like from the first original seasons of the original one was interesting but just kept going on and on and on and after a yeah. certain point it was yeah i mean that's kind of a problem with the genre a lot of ways but um i don't know the manga like i said before i think that i think this genre does better in manga form it's paced better i feel yeah. like mm. um i finished akira finally um I know, yeah. and uh that's the manga i was pleasantly yeah. surprised yeah the manga ha- <laughs> yeah the movie i've been watching it for months <laughs> <laughs> finally got done <laughs> the, the, the the manga um i was surprised by how n- much it did not crawl up its own ass and like give this like really vague like what happened ending like i thought that was gonna hmm. be the case but actually the ending ending was like very um straightforward it was like okay <laughs> so like you know i'm not gonna say what it is but like it just it felt straightforward and not like you know 
this like trying to like mine you know mine fuck you in a way you know like the way like an Ava would or something like that um, so I was actually appreciative of that um, I would recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it um Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> yeah, Reddit. I mean, um, it's it's quite good. Um, they have a lot. They make they work a lot of plots into it that I don't think the movie touches on. I think works really well together. Um, it's impressive. It's a classic for a reason. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and if you've seen the movie, don't think that's uh, sufficient. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. You know, and it's funny in the movie. I have this image of him and with the with the pill on the back of his leather jacket. The main character, Kanita, you know, yeah. what I'm talking about. He's his jacket doesn't have the pill on it in the manga. Oh wow, it's really weird. <laughs> they just added that because um, the pills are what the like psychic people take in order to keep their powers from going bonkers, and that's kind of why Tetsuo goes crazy because he kind of stops taking his pills. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just thought that was a weird because that all is an iconic image of me of, of, of Kanita like in walking to his motorcycle with a pill on his back. It always seemed like I, they must have made it up for the movie. I just didn't. I think know. in the movie like there is this whole drug culture in general, right? And they cut they do, the first volume does touch on that, like the gang, like they're they take amphetamines like before they um you know head out to go do gang stuff. <laughs> it's sort of like my uh, motorcycle fight stuff. Yeah, their motorcycle fights, <laughs> and then get in trouble the next day in school or whatever. The movie has its flaws, but seeing how many like volumes of the manga it's trying to like fit into yeah, a single yeah. two-hour story, I don't think the ma- uh, the yeah, sorry the movie should be discredited. As no, a piece no, of, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's a, a I mean, piece it, of crap at all. Well, I mean, no, it's I mean, a, and it's a classic for a reason yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just different reasons. Different reasons, absolutely. Yeah. But like, I recommend both, but just in different ways. Or I've, right. I haven't read like all of the manga. I've only read some of it. Mm-hmm. Something that I one time when I get back to it's just one of those things that for some reason like I start reading it and then mm-hmm. I stopped and then things in life and I just never got back to it but mm-hmm. I definitely want to read it myself yeah, yeah. I would definitely uh, track it down and read it um, I thought it was really cool I'm really glad I read it um, I'm fr- so on the video game front I played uh, mm-hmm. I've been playing <laughs> Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp, and that's the, the symbol for sharp, like on a sheet music. Hmm. F E, and I believe the F E stands for Fire Emblem. This is a Shimogami Tensei, which is hmm. the main series that encompasses like Persona and then the other one, the other Shimogami Tensei games, crossed with Fire Emblem for the Wii U. Okay. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's about pop idols. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so it's like, like modern day pop idols. Or yes. Mo- okay. Yeah. No. You're like you're straight up like you're in Shibuya. Like there's a concert going oh, on, like an anime are. concert going on in the middle of Shibuya, and like all of a sudden so these monsters they- appear and like abduct like <laughs> abduct everyone's like souls and like you as you know one of the characters that has like what is called a performa, I believe, mm. allows you to integrate with a mirage who happens to be a Fire Emblem character, <laughs> and mm. then you go into the dungeon and then it's like. Like <laughs> the battles are like on a stage with like a crowd going woo, like, waving those like wands they all w- w- wave during concerts. And, like, what, and what, what surprises me is that they made this game because making games takes a while. Yeah, this game has been announced a while ago. <laughs> it took well, a while to come out of here. Um, Fire Alp, um, Emblem and Persona are both really popular series. It's true. So. Yeah, um, it's weird. Like the Fire Emblem stuff is like. Hmm. The Fire Emblem stuff is weird because, like, there's you, hear, you see stuff like with the level up music is Fire Emblem music, but it's it's like Persona in the sense it's a turn based RPG. It's not a tactical RPG like Fire Emblem. Um, but it it it's just it's so crazy. It's one of the things where like it, it's crazy enough it works <laughs> in in the, that weird way. Hmm. Um, I think they make good use of the gamepad. Like as you're targeting enemies, like it'll tell you like if you know if they're weak, you know if you discover their weaknesses and stuff, we'll just give you all that information out, right? Because like it's all about exploring the enemy's weaknesses and then like doing chain attacks. It's it's a long system. I'm gonna explain the whole thing, <laughs> um, but and also like they use the gamepad for like your phone, so like you know, you'll get texts from people and say like, "Yo, what's going on? Check it out. We're in the dungeon, or <laughs> whatever. Come join us, or something like that." Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> one of the characters from Fire Emblem Tiki, who's like this girl who turned into a dragon in the Fire Emblem series, uh, she's like the Vocaloid of this world, <laughs> but she's also like the one that handles like all your like you know fusions and stuff like that that you would do. She's kind of like I guess the Igor of the Persona world, but a lot cuter. Um, not this creepy old man. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I, it's just it's crazy enough. It works. And I'm going to keep playing it because it's just, it's just so weird and bonkers. Um, you know, and it, I don't think they're going to touch. I don't expect this to be a commentary on like the idol culture and the life of an idol and like the bad parts of that life because they don't. Re- I don't expect this game to go in that direction. But they do kind of like show like you know you know 
you have the, the company, the idol production company is like a front for this like demon fighting organization. So it's, you know, they have to put up a front. They do have idols and I don't know. It's, it's something else, <laughs> but you know, there's not like a lot of great, like big RPGs out for the Wii U. So it's kind of this or maybe like Xenoblade Chronicles X. It's kind of it when you come on RPGs. So J- big JRPGs. So it's really, is a lack of like, really Wii U games like there isn't like a huge library yeah. feels like I thought the Wii like it had like it's great first party games but it had all these weird third party games like No More Heroes um, I'm trying to think of some others like um, like like Little King Story like all these like weird like kind of experimental games that you know besides all the crappy party collections but like that were like kind of mostly coming out of Japan like Miramasa was first on the Wii which is the Vanillaware game and well, that's a good one yeah and the Wii U just didn't it just didn't get any games like that like the third I mean because it was as hard I mean because it was isn't enough out there that no one sees the value in making mm-hmm. uh, Wii U games besides Nintendo but or the Wii was a lot more popular right right so, so that's why I think a lot more people are willing to experiment and also it even the spot inspired a whole lot of people because of the game controller at the time was something right, right, like exactly. quote revolutionary unquote well, Wii yeah. Sports I think alone sold that platform oh yeah yeah for sure um but yeah, we. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So the Wii U. I mean, if you really want an RPG for the Wii U, this is probably the best you're going to get. I haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles X, but that game looks insanely complicated. So, or could you give the title again? Oh sure. Um, it's a Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and then it's the symbol for sh- like it's. I'm saying sharp, but it's like I think it's the symbol for sharp on sheet music. Basically, mm-hmm. hashtag like, yeah. F E. Yeah, hashtag. They don't. Yeah, they don't. No, say no, it. it's a sharp symbol, not a hash. Well, yeah, that's yes, I, mean, I got you that. Can see it. But I mean, that's for people who don't know how to read okay. music. We'll identify it yeah. as that. So it's it's bonkers. Uh, give it a try before you maybe. And you like JRPGs, and you got nothing else to try. Um, and then I was I I like I had this old Xbox. I just talked about this on the show, and it came it given to me. It came with like a bunch of XBL live uh, XBL live arcade games on it and a game I always wanted to try that was actually on there that I decided to start playing was Shadow Complex and this is uh, hmm. came out uh, 2009-ish I think um, this was the game that I think a lot of people it, it, re- it revigorated people in thinking like Metroidvania games like mm-hmm. that style of game was like mm-hmm. this was the first one that kind of like reignited that flame that people want that now a lot of indie developers are now going after this is uh, by Chair they make the Affinity Blade series for the iPhone and, and iOS and stuff uh, they're owned by Epic I believe um and it's just it's 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 just a fundamentally a really fun game, you know. Good shooting, uh, you know. You're in this underground complex, and it's like it's kind of like Metroid uh, mixed with Castlevania. There's an experience system, you know. You collect canisters, you increase, you increase your you know your life capacity or your grenade capacity, stuff like that. So, and you get and you get new in like a Metroid game or or a Sim of the Night type of game, you get um, abilities to let you access new areas, and that's sort of how they gate progress as well as gate like where you know backtracking. You want to backtrack and get like secrets and stuff. Hmm. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's a really it's fun. I really I'm enjoying playing it. Is uh, the gameplay mainly two D plane or three D? Because looking at like I screenshots right, yeah. doing an image search on Google, like I'm seeing a whole bunch of scenes that almost make it look like three D at times. Right, but 2D right. At- You're on a two D plane, uh, jumping, climbing, all that stuff, and shooting on a two D plane. But you can also sort of swing yourself into the background, just shoot at enemies that are like maybe on a plane like behind you. Hmm. It's a little hard to explain. There's it's pretty generous auto aim for the shooting so that's kind of how they handle that situation because like enemies will come running in from like the background to the foreground and you can sort of gun them down as they're running towards you um, so they do actually do kind of cool things with that that kind of makes it stand out a little bit more than like a Metroid like a Super Metroid um, but it is primarily like, you're on a 2D plane like you don't need to jump into the background of the foreground you're constantly during the shooting so- sequences it can become kind of yeah exactly okay. yeah, yeah. Um, I guess is it. I started Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the new Mirror's Edge game, but um, I barely started it. Uh, so a ton to say about it. Then I think it's definitely a lot better than the first one, um, and I like the first one, but um, I can't say enough yet if it's like going to be this big improvement on it. Um, I hope it's cool. I think it's a great concept for a game like a parkour, you know, first person narrative driven game. But I don't know. We'll see if it's possible. <laughs> this game will tell the tale. <laughs> and that's it for me. Okay, and. Oh. Yeah, what about for me? So uh, on the game front, since we're talking games, I finished up a tiny little indie game called Refunct. Hmm. That I can't remember where I picked it up. Uh, I think it was like in a batch of other things. Uh, it's a very slight game. It's kind of a jumping game, platformer. Hmm. Uh, it's almost it's it's a little more than a tech demo, but not much. 
Um, so you sort of like jump around different platforms, um, and you, you, more or less they're sort of gray concrete. And when you land on them, they turn. What's it called? Refunct. 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 Okay. Yeah. F-U-N-C-T. Oh, F-U-N-C-T. Okay, got it. Sorry. Yeah, and so it's sort of like the the platforming gets a little more complex, and it has very mild puzzles, but it's mostly just a pleasant world, pleasant soundtrack. As you reach various points, new uh, pillars pop up. Um, oh, just for clarity, C as in cat, not C as in said. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, they're saying about the platforming. Uh, yeah, so it's a fairly straightforward platforming. Uh, after a while, you you look. It, the game does a nice job of sort of teaching you the techniques you need to use to jump. You know, you can sort of like jump off of multiple walls to okay, get that's, higher. That's funny because uh, this looks kind of like a parkour style game. In a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it, like it, it's a little edge, bit, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. but there's not much to it. So, like, if you watch a uh, uh, a trailer for it, that that'll be pretty much all you get. It did mm-hmm. remind me of Dead Core, which I need to get back to though. Mm-hmm. So it's which, some kind of arcade. Arcadey, man. It's um, it's a little too aimless to be arcadey. Mm. Is it like a time trial thing? Like, nope. You're, okay, okay. Nope. No, it's basically trial. just you know you can take as much time as you want to explore this world, and it gets. And what one interesting thing is, like, if you jump in the water, you can see all of the other towers that haven't risen up yet. Hmm. So it's just kind of an interesting world building exercise. Hmm. Uh, so a, a developer to watch, I'd say. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, Mushroom Eleven. I played through a couple levels of that is a wacky little piece of work for sure <laughs> so uh it's kind of a very weird actiony puzzle game but your character such as it is is a sort of a slime mold thing mm-hmm. and you interact with the slime mold with your mouse by erasing parts of it and as you erase parts of it the slime mold grows on the other side which lets it then build up some momentum and so however it's it's rigid so if you can get it sort of hooked onto something you can use this the physics of the world and of this slime mold to kind of work your way around and there's actual boss fights which are kind of odd (laughs) um Thus far, it's been quite good. From what I've heard, uh, some of the puzzles get a bit unfair and annoying by the time you get to, like, levels 5 and 7. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the first few levels are a lot of fun, just a really unique game. And it, it's just a fun concept, fun to play with. Um, it's surprisingly intuitive. So definitely I would recommend checking this one out. Um, yeah, I think I have it. I mean, uh, uh, I, got, I got it somehow through yeah. it. I'm sure some way. <laughs> yeah, Humble Bundle <laughs> yeah, or it's, something. It's yeah. in my library. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how I got it, too. Um, so, But other than that, like I've been digging through my incredible backlist of games on Steam trying to come up with things to play. And one that I latched onto this past week was Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War, hmm. which is, I think, a 2008-ish or was it earlier than that, even? It might be. No, no I think it was it's it, after that. Yeah. No, actually, it, 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 I think it was 2003, actually. Is that old? Wow. I think it's super old. 2002, I think, came out. Or, excuse me, Dawn of War 2 came out in, like, 2008. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so this is the first Dawn of War. This is the first okay. one. So, and, and that was sort of, in my opinion, the first of the Dawn of War games that really started to feel really playable. Um, and it, it was Relic developed it, and it's a straight-up uh, real-time strategy game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was a, diff- a definite change from sort of like the classic Warhammer 40k turn-based combat that everybody had been trying to reproduce. Right. So it sort of takes the spirit of the, you know, incredibly fecund Warhammer 40k universe. Uh, you get like maybe three different armies. Uh, the main single-player campaigns just from the straight-up old boring space marines. Uh, but, you know, it's it's just uh, I hadn't played an RTS in quite a while, and mm. it's, it's good. And it's also interesting to sort of see from this remove those 2000, those early 2000 graphics, mm-hmm. uh, which are pretty, pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, the, the game plays really well. It took me a while to sort of get back, you know, those RTS legs, you know, getting out because you really need to get your keyboard bindings down if you're going to do this at all efficiently. 
Is it like hero based? Like it is not. Okay. So, so that was the big shift with Dawn two. of War okay. two, yeah, yeah, yeah. and which I played again just a little bit of. Mm-hmm. So, but I figured I'd start with Dawn of War and yeah. uh, play through that one. I, I don't actually have any of like the uh, sequels in, okay. the, in the library, but I do have. The, that is to say, there were I think three separate expansions that were made for the original Dawn okay. of War. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do have all of the Dawn of War two. So I'll, after I finish up, I think I'm on like uh, mission nine out of 11, so I'm almost through it. Cool. So I'll be moving on to Dawn of War 2 shortly. Do you think this would be a good game for people like StarCraft? Like, what comes to my mind is Alan talking about how he used to, like, I think the StarCraft games were mm-hmm. like... Oh, so. yeah, it, it's very much in that wheelhouse. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, so it's not quite as perfectly tuned, I would say, as StarCraft. Hmm. I mean, StarCraft, they, the, 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 there's... I, I guess sort of where this falls down a bit is on the interface. It does not feel quite as clean as StarCraft. But nonetheless, you know, if you want that kind of experience in a different world, I think this game is still quite worthwhile visiting these w- Which days. one were you talking about? Uh, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War. Okay, yeah, this is no. the original one from 2003, which has yeah. been sitting in my library for, you know, <laughs> ages. And I just figured I'd finally sit down and play through it. And I, and I started getting into it. So the missions are fun. Cool. Um, you know, the story, you know, is sort of your typical over the top Warhammer 40k thing, but you know I like that, so it's 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 been enjoyable. Hmm. Space orcs, spelled with the K. Space orcs, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got your space orcs, you got your Eldar, and you have your Chaos Marines. Mm. And I'm just getting to the missions where you get to go up. I'm at the first one against the Chaos Marines at the moment. So, do you play the Total War games? I have not. So you know, if you check anything out on the Total War Hammer, right? So they should so, call so it. It's I've, called Total War Warhammer 40k. Or <laughs> yeah, which is just like a terrible thing to search on because it's. I mean, so, it's a fancy war. No, no, it's it, it's the fantasy version. Right, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, I so I've actually I actually have uh, some of the Total War games in my library from mm-hmm. a humble bundle, but once again I had interface problems with them, so oh, I just it. never yeah. sat down to to fight my way through them. Gotcha. But like you know, I, oh, back in college, all my friends were big tabletop Warhammer players. I didn't really, but sort of mm-hmm. I picked up a lot of the lore of the universe, mm-hmm. and it's cool. a it's yeah. a it's a nice universe. And basically, you know, uh, uh, Blizzard made their fortune ripping off uh, <laughs> Games Workshop and Warhammer. Oh, yeah. See, I like Warhammer. Um, I-, I never played the first one. I think I played Warhammer 2. That was the one that was really I engaged with. Mm-hmm. And then uh, eventually 3, but not mm-hmm. the online version. Uh, Warcraft. You mean the, the, the Blizzard Warcraft? Yeah, that's The what original I mean. Warcraft, not Warhammer. No, so, no. I, uh, did I say Warhammer? You I said meant, Warhammer. Oh, okay. No, I meant the original Warcraft. Yeah. I, I played the second one was my entry point into the Warcraft universe, and then three, but not the online. Yeah. To clarify so the, the, the I have to say that the second War, the Warcraft 2 was a brilliantly designed and balanced game. Mm. I mean, that just was uh, uh, sort of, in my opinion, the perfect real-time mm. strategy game. Okay. Uh, but I guess that's enough for games for the moment. Uh, I guess I will move on to anime, power through this fast here, talk about some things we hadn't talked about, because I think we're running long. But the one thing I do want to mention is I finished up Re-Life, mm. uh, which, uh, which is uh, this season's show, but dropped all in one single batch. And I have to say it's going to be hard to beat as my top show of the season. Mm. It is excellent. It's uh, just as good as the manga. Seems to be a fairly straight-up adaptation of the manga. Uh, what I've noticed so far, or what I've noticed is that there's been some sort of trimming of unnecessary scenes, but everything else has been more or less exact. Uh, mm-hmm. Crunchyroll has licensed the manga through Volume 5, which is about Chapter 83.5, if I recall correctly, which, so I have not read all the way to the end of the manga. Mm-hmm. So I'm not quite sure how, how the ending matches up to how the manga continues along, but I will definitely want to read the manga because I would like more of this story because it's pretty good. Uh, they wrap up the series well, uh, though they also drop in some revelations that you wish they might have handled, you know, like in another few episodes. Um, but we've also been thinking uh, uh, Botox has finished this up as well, so yes. we'll probably be doing a show on this. So you'll be hearing more about that soon. I enjoyed it, but I don't think I enjoyed it as much as oh, Paul. Okay, yeah, fair enough. 
but again, I mean, it's something I seriously do recommend. Just yeah, it's it's a, it's really a seinen series. It does a nice job of sort of recontextualizing the high school romance show. Uh, it does not take the obvious routes most of the time. I mean, it's not the deepest show ever by any stretch, but I think it's still nicely executed. And uh, I guess we'll see how the other shows this season end up stacking up because I'm we're judging a, I'm judging a completed show against sort of the potential of these other ones. Maybe mm-hmm. Mob Psycho 100 is going to yeah, pull it off. That's the one that I'm currently just enjoying a whole lot more just because of just it's such a visual feast yeah and they're, they're such different shows I mean that show's just a lot of fun um, but but it could also get it could also run out of steam after six episodes uh, anything else to mention uh, oh I, I did check out additional episodes of Cheer Danshi or Cheer Boys right right and yeah it's not, <laughs> it's fine it's 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 a kind of a bland show that's the, mm-hmm. the sports one where you've got the boys who want the form of male cheerleader squad right well, it's not bad um you know if you want sort of a bland uh, boy show that is not yet another idol show it's actually a, a decent entry in that field and i checked out another episode of honda kun which is the Brakamon spinoff right okay and actually that's good i'm enjoying that right. um, are they still doing so much of the meta stuff no nope, there doing... was there was no meta at all this one okay. are they no. doing like half episodes like there are the two like arcs in one episode yeah there are two arcs okay, in an episode yeah. And they were they were pretty good. I mean, you know, it's the kind of humor that you are going to expect from this. I mean, it's not mm. going to go super far out on a limb. Uh, but but I enjoyed that as well. Cool. So, uh, and I guess the last one I will mention this week is Aldera Mean on the Sky, which mm. is the light novel adaptation. I was wasn't too keen on the first episode, uh, but as of episode four, I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's it's a definitely on the bland side, but it's it's not going down the usual route. So many of these um, high school high school ish uh, light novel adaptations go. Uh, the characters feel a bit older, and it's been sort of very militarily focused, sort of military clever tactics, and cool. I, I like that aspect of it. Is this like life or th- life or death type of level of military or just sort of training type well, so stuff? It, it, both yeah. in, as of the most recent episode so there was a, a sort of a you know a military exercise and then there was a side story that took a you know a very violent turn mm-hmm. so thus far better than I've been expecting so that's on my to watch list for the moment they How toned about the, oh, the tail topic fairy so I was, well, yeah. was, yeah. was going to say did they tone down the, um, the creepiness of the main character at all yeah or, 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 yeah. so I, you know this it would be such a stronger show if uh, they had just left that out because it doesn't matter most of the time and every so yeah. often they're like oh yeah this character's a creep we better toss that in <laughs> can't forget so you know it like gets um you know every episode or so there'll be like some reference to the fact that this is the kind of thing he does but he's not doing it all the time Good. so um also like for me i think the thing that threw me off was those stupid little fairy things like, and, they... and once again they like they, they could have left those out so easily because they get like you know 15 seconds of screen time in episode tops. But they have to sell key change or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that, we'll, we'll see how that goes over the next few episodes. Okay. Um, Colin Luke released a new show that was on Sunday. Uh, so check that out. I've been relatively not exactly ignoring this Skype. I don't turn on this one particular machine on that receives the Skype messages. I finally checked it and I saw that we had a uh, we had some feedback from uh, Alex. It's the part of the show where they talk about the show for half of the show. It's the feedback. It is indeed an already buried lead, so let's uh, let's just go ahead and listen uh, to the feedback, the voicemail that came in from Alex. Hey, Taco Generation. This is longtime listener Alex. I'm calling you in because I was curious about something. It seems like now, um, have you guys either been sponsored or are you sponsored at all? Because I was kind of curious what happened. Because, like, the older episodes and the newer episodes, they don't line up. Um, just curious about that. Secondly, I've been thoroughly enjoying all of your shows. Um, I like the format that you guys do for any of the previews, whenever you actually have a timer for what you can talk about and what you can't talk about. And I can't remember the name of it right now, but there was a show from a couple of years ago that I should still have. That was similar to the one that you're that Alan likes, the uh, scuba diving one. Only it had similarity with scuba diving, but I think it also had to do with some sort of cyberspace as well. Um, I'll get back to you on that. And also, 
have they ever updated uh, Blue Sub number six? Because I remember they did that a long time ago. Um, I was wondering if there was an actually an HD release of that pretty recently or not. Uh, that's about it. Uh, the only other thing is the only other anime that I've been watching was um, I actually just rewatched the new the um, the Fusion Reborn movie with Vegeta and and Goku. I, I think I remember that. Jefferson or it was Bryce who made an AMV about that. I always was curious about the footage about that. Now I can finally see where it lines up. And I loved that. I loved rewatching that because I had me going back to thinking back to the olden days whenever I was watching Toonami. All right, guys, that's about it. Have a great one. Bye. Awesome thing, Alex. Um, so no, we. So where's my cut? You were sponsored now. Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> we're not sponsored. I did, I did lit up a Patreon a while ago, but I never really activated it. Um, and uh, I don't know. It seemed to be really kind of confusing. I have to really kind of understand the the language that Patreon um, you know, works in so that I can properly set up those kinds of things. I'd rather you guys be sponsoring us, not saying that if there isn't a sponsor out there that thinks we make sense for them, uh, that they should not reach out to us. Um, but, yeah, we've just been, I've been very picky about that kind of thing. When we've gotten offers in the past, it just didn't make any sense or align with what we do. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, maybe one day I'll do affiliations, I don't know. But, um, but in terms of lining up, maybe tone or maybe you think it's because we we don't say certain things um, probably don't say certain things probably because we're trying to we're not as, we're not as crass as we used to be no, I, I think I think <laughs> the uh, cast changes over the years have really sort of affected the tone of the show I mean it's sure, just, yeah. you know, the style of whoever happens to be on mm -hmm. really affects the discussion hasn't yeah, happened we were more of a wild bunch back in 2005 in the early days fewer um, um, you know yeah uh, fewer a wide range of personality types. I think that's really what it comes down to. This is a pretty dedicated uh, group and bunch, and so we kind of operate that way. The other thing is you try not to spoil things too much. Um, oftentimes on mic, if you're here for the live recording, a lot of that's happening, and I just simply cut it out. Mm. Uh, and because I think it's, I think it's fair that you know not everyone is watching mm -hmm. uh, as much or as frequently or at the same pace as maybe some individuals here on the cast. Are. So I, I kind of want to try to protect that as much as possible. Um, plus, not ruin it for for some people that are sensitive to that. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's the comment you had. I don't know. You can just you know call us back and let us know. So um, um, we were trying to figure out what other show you were thinking of. Uh, Alan was thinking it might be Nagi no Asakara. Well, I think that's the one he was referring to. So, so I think uh, he's probably yeah. referring to uh, Real, Real Drive. Drive. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I was trying he, to remember the name. He of. did. Say Say that thing, Alan was blah blah blah, similar to, and so I think you're, you know, out you're probably targeting something different. But Nagi no Asakara was the one that I was. No, I think no, no was cyberspace in that one though, yeah. and, and Real Drive had the metal in it, so that's probably yeah. the the most likely candidate there. Matt, what's their uh, metal? What's their term for their pseudo yeah for, for the, for the thing. cyberspace mm. thing? Yeah. He specifically said there was cyberspace in it. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing is Blue Summary number six. I haven't heard of any new releases yeah, around I don't think that. So. But uh, surprisingly, Crunchyroll has licensed the OVA for that, so all no. four episodes are streamable at the moment. They licensed the Street Fighter Two movie too. <laughs> <laughs> I was I almost watched it. I was like, yeah, almost, yeah. <laughs> almost. I probably will, but uh, yeah. so, so has anybody licensed Deno Coil? I mean, oh. I thought someone did. That so uh, yeah, I thought so too. But uh, was that um, the other one? That was the um, the the augmented reality one no yeah i remember the show uh what's the other one uh is it i can't think of the other network that is is really fundamentally based in japan but is doing was doing some u.s release stuff on their site so made in japan licensed it apparently Okay. Anime works. Nah. Nice thing on the <laughs> no, I, I, I <laughs> no, it haven't heard of them. Um, I think they're older have, license. I certainly have heard of them, but uh, yeah, but, I don't but, know. You know. It seems like with all the Pokemon Go stuff going on, that would be a, a, a good one to watch. Yeah, maybe. So okay, cool. Uh, okay, yeah. Thanks for thanks for uh, writing in. Yeah, yeah feedback. Calling in.
And, uh, you know, as mentioned, there's always easy ways you guys can just write in. I say it every single time at the end of the show. You guys probably just stop and, or skip uh, by the end of it, that. It really did used to be uh, half the show. It really did. It used to be half the show. People would write in. Um, you know, the, the podcasting universe and definitely the anime podcasting universe was way smaller. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go out there. I, I do hunt down directories that just throw us up there. And if I just don't like something they're doing, I say remove us, give them sort of a cease and uh, you know desist stuff. Um, so sometimes we don't show up in the list, and it's usually because I want you know to that podcast directory and said no 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 get my stuff off your thing. But every time I do that, I get to see the bazillion of like anime otaku shows that are out there, and there's a lot. There are a lot. Uh, there are a lot more than when we started. I I there was just not even very many, less than a half a dozen. Right. So, um, yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> I'm rambling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So two things. One, according to this one site, Made in Japan is supposed to have released it on June 28th, 2016. What's so, that? Uh, for Denon Coil. Denon oh. Coil? Yeah. Oh, as like a few days ago. Yeah. So oh, right. or no, a few days last month. A month and ago. A few days, yeah, a ah. month ago. Because it was supposed to be sixty dollars for the DVD and seventy for the Blu-ray. For, so is that is that all twenty six episodes? Uh, that's what it sounds like. Ah, oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. First half. Sorry, first half. Oh, uh, okay. So, so oh, definitely old school uh, pricing. Mm. Yeah. So I guess a hundred and like twenty, two hundred and forty yeah, okay. for the it's whole a, series. It's a really good series, though. Yeah, that's, really good. It's the only thing kind of ruins it for me is because there's a lot of stuff I want to buy and write stuff, but you know it comes with a price tag that I'm not really comfortable with all the time. So, and the other thing was is that Blue Submarine Six, from my can tell, in 2014 did have a Blu-ray or release, and you can find it on Amazon. Not that difficult oh, really? for about cool. twenty dollars. Was that a, was that the actual U.S. release, or was it uh, an international release that had English? Uh, it seems like it's an English release. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just double check, but with U.S. Uh, I was, was my uh, the U.S. release. That's what I mean. Um, but no, I mean it seems like it's just a regular blah blah type. Okay. Copy Interesting. Thing. Cool. Hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so um, I guess we'll just run a break. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment with our actual topic for this week. Hi, I'm Kyle Carosa, the Kyle of TV's Kyle, and you're listening to Otaku Generation, and I'm playing with my chicken bear. Book, 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 book. And we are back from break, and I guess we're on to our topic this week, which is... Flying Witch, or in Japanese, um... Flying Witch. <laughs> okay, I think so, so. I mean, it looks like from w- the Wikipedia page, that's just called Flying Witch, like, regardless. Yeah, they just, they just yeah. read it in or, Hitakana. So what do we need to know to get started? So this is a, based off of a manga. It's an episodic anime series where you have this witch in training living with some relatives in the smallish town, and there are other sort of fantasy type elements like creatures and other witches and harbingers of spring and whatnot that live mm-hmm. there and you meet them every other episode and that's pretty yeah, much it's, it's a very <laughs> slice of life focused show uh it's very much in this genre of shows set in a remote village in this case in Aomori, which is uh right at the northern tip of uh, the main island of Japan. And so you have sort of depictions of what it's like to live in this area, very slow pacing. But the interesting thing here is, of course, the magical aspect, which uh, some of these shows can be sort of very mundane. And this adds an element of mystery, which is kind of nice because they don't always um, feel obligated to make everything perfectly explicable. You just have kind of these weird things that happen, and sometimes people find them a little odd. But but, mm-hmm. like not super odd so they, they just kind of accept them might raise their eyebrows uh, but in, in general just sort of life goes on with these interesting things going on under the surface yeah, the characters are amazingly accepting of just <laughs> this stuff that just it's like oh there's this person with the face of an L just walking to the door handing out newspapers so oh, whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> Shinatsu the little sister like she her rea- in, in the early part of the series her reactions yeah. to things are actually pretty great like when the Harbinger <laughs> Spring showed up and she was like, like closed the door and was like what's the number to the police <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is a creep out there. Yeah, like, yeah. scary face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, Chinatsu is a great character. Yeah. So she Definitely. is Makoto's uh, cousin, uh, the younger uh, sister of, yep. of, the fa- of the family yeah, that yeah. she's staying with. Uh, do, you think, do you think there are some things that are being that we were supposed to learn about sort of culture or things? Like, I didn't know about, was it Bake? 
I didn't know about what those things were. You know, or, the the things that were cooking in the second episode. Oh, the the, uh, the, the flower buds or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. So so th- there's uh, you know there are a lot of sort of regional cuisines in Japan, mm-hmm. particularly for things like mountain herbs or whatever is grown locally. Right. So so yeah, I mean that's very so uh, there's a couple of places where there are things that are very obviously very closely tied to Aomori's food culture. Just mm-hmm. you know because they they aren't things that you'd like sell in the markets generally. You know you might get like a once a year somebody might you know pack up a bunch and send them off to markets in Tokyo or something but right. but this is very much you know this is this is what people live like in out here in the sticks mm-hmm. there's a very farming there's like a farming aspect to the show as well like oh, they do touch yeah, upon yeah i got that and yeah. and the sort of the i would think like mm-hmm. the things like the harbinger are probably maybe sort of spiritual references or something about thinking of from a, a point of view of of religion or culture so uh, it's sort of the, the the magical underpinnings of the universe. So you know the seasons don't turn on their own is kind of the implication there. Right, but yeah. you know you have the uh, you know the spirits which you know, sort of keep things moving along. And so one of these characters, as it's mentioned a couple times, is the Harbinger of Spring, uh, who's just a uh, extremely tall, extremely creepy looking figure. But he seems to be reasonably friendly once you get down to him. As in fact is everybody in this series. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there are no actual sort of threats in this world yeah. at all. Uh, which has led this to sort of be, be generally referred to as a what's what's known as an iashike anime, uh, which is a term that's really cropped up in the past year or so, uh, which means a healing show. So it's it's a place to spend time. You know, it's supposed to be a restorative show. You're not going to be challenged at all when you watch this. Mm, uh, you know, nice characters, nice uh, place to spend time, just relaxing. And I think uh, it does that. Uh, some of the shows in this genre can end up being a little too flat. And at points, the sort of magical aspect of the show gives it a little bit of a, list, uh, a lift. Uh, though I feel that some of the episodes where that isn't featured, so for example, one of the more farming focused ones where mm-hmm. they're off in the uh, orchard harvesting, for example, right, you know, they're yeah. pleasant, they're nice, but you know, there's not much uh, to those episodes. It's just. It's like, okay, it yeah. feels like it can maybe drag a bit at times. Hmm. It's like the episode where they're picking the flowers off of the apple trees to... Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And that was like a half episode with like the other half was uh, like uh, one of the girls, the friend... Um, now she can't cook. That was also, I think it was the same episode where she like doesn't know how to cook and it was like, You can do it. And it was like home at class and she Actually I think she... that was one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> well no, I think <laughs> okay. I, I swear those were the same episode. like they yeah. went from that yeah. two into that. So, no, no yeah. I think they're right, but it's yeah. like a two halves. Yeah, but I mean yeah. those two halves, like the serve sort of, like slice of life, like the mm-hmm. one where Oh you like for... oh so you like those episodes, you Yeah, I actually uh, think okay. I prefer that to the magical stuff. Oh because, interesting. Because the magical stuff just like I think what bothers me with stuff like that is when you have like these world elements that you have the world itself being very much almost like just the regular world as we live in but then you have these fantastical elements but they don't seem to actually influence the normal type people or the Mm -hmm. muggles or whatever if it's the Harry Potter term Um, like it's like oh, so there are these giant flying invisible wells. Right, these or, are these are things that only will, like witches get to experience. But it seems like the people like there are regular people that do know of the witches. So you'd think like it's almost like what bothers me with a lot of superhero stories, especially Western superhero stories. It's like you have these superheroes, and you'd think like the world governments and mob organizations and whatnot would try to like utilize people like that and serve ways, but instead it's just like you have the regular world, and then you have these superheroes, and never the two shall meet, yeah. except when there's a big fight, and then. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, isn't that like how Harry Potter is like too? You know, that kind of I thing. never really got too much into Harry Potter but either. But it's very much the same thing. It's its own world that's kind of hidden away from, and eventually one leaks into the other a little bit, but not usually. I never got too much into Harry Potter, but at least their excuse is that there's a sort of alternate dimension that all the magical people live in, and now and then they walk into the regular world, but I thought most of it took place in this sort of... And they've got a division of people who's, you know, if anybody, any muggles find out about it, they'll... You know, Kill them. The no. <laughs> yeah, that's but, a different group. I but, mean, yeah. certainly this show isn't about like a race war between witch people and non-witch people. It's not. It's just not what this show is about. Or yeah, I'm not. Nor saying, is like, it focused on those kind of things. Or I'm not saying like I was expecting or wanted to become some sort of big dramatic thing. It's just that there's such huge magical elements at times, like the giant whales and just the witches are clearly mm-hmm. popping in and out. That to just 
way too segregated from regular society. Like, if you just took away these magical elements, this world would just be our world as we know it. Yeah, th- this show is much more about mood than about logical explanations, for sure. But for the, I mean, one moment, like in the first episode, which I think is one of the best moments of the show with the Mandrake, mm. I mean, I think that is just like, oh, that, yeah. th- that is sort of the moment where, you know, and everybody is in town is clearly hearing this Mandrake root just screaming, <laughs> this hideous scream that goes, on and on and on uh, so so clearly other uh, normals can sense some aspects of this world uh, but yeah they just aren't too worried about it yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say though the whale I, I agree with you that that's a very crazy thing yeah. but I, for the most part the magic actually is very non flashy like right yeah like when we, for instance the cafe it looks like this um you know building is in ruins and you do like a little prayer and it'd be whoever if you do like a shrine prayer it'll become like a nice cafe to you and you go inside but they never show the transformation of the cafe like they kind of cut away and they do the same thing whenever like uh, Akane the sister of uh, Makoto the main character whenever she teleports they don't actually ever show her actually teleporting I thought that'd be interesting. I thought it was an interesting choice to not to show that stuff because yeah. I, I think it's more affordable approach of doing that. But also, it, it, again, it it reinforces this idea that you know that stuff just happens and that's part of this world and it's not the focus for why people should watch the show. Where in other shows, you'll have some girl, regardless of age, transform for forty five seconds. And, fan service. <laughs> and then the fan service and then it becomes um, hey look at my beautiful outfit where I'm kicking ass in it and and the, you know ultimately that's what was important to the artist and that's what was important to the writing and that's what was important for the show because it it, it continues to keep eyes you know on, on the show and helps them continue a profit machine actually I, oh sorry no, I, was, go ahead. I was about to say I just originally just said fan service but actually the transformation sequence are more of a money saving technique because you just have it in every freaking episode it's actually a way of easily getting rid of a couple of minutes of animation you just have those well, right, you also get your, your uh, that many minutes of fan service right, on said, the screen so it's not so yeah, it's both it's both <laughs> yeah but, but what I meant when I said you know saving some money it's, it's a, not a production hassle right it's a thing they don't have to do and they can continue to sort of you know not focusing on those things which are really just unnecessary accessories so one thing we do have with this show is um there's it's not a moe show which so many of the slice of life shows are and i have to say i really do appreciate that all the characters are realistic they are not played for having you know particularly appealing characteristics though they're perfectly nice as characters Mm -hmm. Um, they're not particularly cutified or sexualized in any way right No, no, no um I, I was, but like the spells they did show, like the um, you know that the, where they like we're gonna make this candy or these tr- snacks like make you feel emotions. It's like you know it's a very long process. You know we draw this circle, we light five candles, we don't touch them, let them burn all the way down, and then oh hey this pocket's gonna make you cry uncontrollably for an hour. It's like <laughs> it's just like why does that spell even exist? I don't know. <laughs> um, do you think it would have been better if they had like just instead of trying to pretend like you know how she said in the opening like to now like oh by the way which is her secret don't talk about it oh wait I shouldn't have told you. You. Like, <laughs> if they just, like, if it was just accepted witches exist in this town and, like, people knew about it, like, maybe you'd be a little more, would you find it a little more, like, uh, I don't know what the word is. Acceptable. Yeah, ex- yeah like. Um, yeah, I think I would have preferred if it was, like, uh, it's been quite a while since I've watched it, but I thought, like, Kiki's delivery service, it was more just, this is an aspect of the world. Right, exactly. Served. I was thinking mm-hmm. that. Like, yeah. It's hard not to think of Kiki's delivery service a little bit when yeah, you think about right. the show. Um, yeah, I think it would be nicer if it was just... Like, they weren't trying to act like, oh, this is a secret, since it was, I think, like, Matt sometimes like, comments, like, it's the secret that everyone knows type yeah. of crap. Because they're like, just, like, thing. I mean, they're flying in the air with the brooms. Yeah. Like, it, they're not, they didn't say, like, oh, we're going to put a cloaking spell on now. Like, they're just up there, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they probably, I, th- I think, you know, we, they should have got, picked one direction or the other right, and stuck yeah. with that. And it um, would have been a little stronger. It's like, in UK, it's the. Um, in UK. In UK. This girl who has been accidentally turned into a sort of uh, furry type character After during hard, the yeah. yeah during yeah. the daytime, like so she's out there like working as a furgin terror. Like yes, she's got a hood on, but there's no way that people couldn't have at some point like noticed it. And, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. 
So mm-hmm. well, I think that was more. I think it was a more emotional state about her hiding and and feeling, you know, like what the hell did you do to me? Kind of attitude. I think it was more about that. Aside right, I'm from not hiding, that. hiding from the oddity that she she became. Right, I'm just saying the fact that no How one would actually sits so close to somebody that looks like a dog <laughs> and not notice that they're part dog, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, even with the cloak on. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what you're saying. But Uh-oh. like as much as I'm sort of like almost complaining right now, I did enjoy watching it. It's just that's one of those things that the more you think about, the more it's kind of like. Yeah, the issues. <laughs> yeah, th- this is not a show for analysis. This is a show for, you, if you, if you can watch it and enjoy it, that's great. It, there's not going to be anything. It, it's beyond not really that. demanding anything of yeah. you. So I mean, it, it, it's also not doing anything to drive your attention on it uh, in a harsh way. Like I said, you know, transformation scenes and fan pandering where they expect you to, to get bored for all of like you know five seconds and now they have to do something flashy to bring your attention back it just doesn't have any of that and that's not necessarily a negative thing or a comment by me I think there's the good comedic moments too they're like they're not like it's not a gag show but like right. you know there's just moments where it's like and one of my favorite moments is in the cafe with the fox dog or whatever it was like what does it say what does it say and it's like well <laughs> like that's the end of the episode <laughs> also when they all were touching it like I love, the dog was just there looking happy like <laughs> or the fox i thought that was well good even too. with the um the, the the daughter or whatever it was you know in like the second episode where she's you know like she hates she hates those flower bud things mm-hmm. and but the father was like playing with her face or whatever <laughs> well she was kind of you know being angsty about it I wanted to ask you about that Paul the father his accent is that like he has a very heavy country accent kind yeah of? okay that's what yeah. they're going with because okay, like Makoto the main character couldn't understand him a lot of times right you know? yeah, one of the other characters has to repeat what he says did that bother you with how they subtitled it or not because I know sometimes that does when they try to <laughs> oh, subtitle or when they put the up accent. on top and then they went back down no no it's like they he, they like kind of like they made it seem like he had an accent like a um, southern accent for us with the subtitles where they spell things out or something. Yeah, right? I, I yeah. guess I wasn't, I didn't care enough. Yeah, so it was it, it, he didn't have enough lines of dialogue so if like they'd been dubbing that to a southern accent, that would have been intolerable but yeah, I mean you, yeah, they, it, it's reasonable that they did something there, mm-hmm. so I think that was an okay choice on well, that part. Well, we I mean, kind of had to Yeah, we, we, we watched The jokes wouldn't make any sense why Makoto couldn't understand right, it yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, I mean to the point we watched the subtitle version I don't know about a dub. I don't think there is a dub So, no, no, no. so when there is a dub well, you know, judgment can be had yeah. there. Or they still subtitled in a way to like show that he had an accent. And right, I yeah, just I got you. Know that at least it's sometimes that's been sort of a pet peeve of Paul when they try to like well, force when, when it. When you do that with like, one of the main characters, you know, you just can't stand. But I think he's in like two episodes where he has like significant dialogue and that's about it. So mm-hmm. no, I, I think, and it, it does help, you know, as Bryce says, those jokes come through. Yeah. So otherwise, I, we wouldn't get it at all. Yeah, exactly. Like, we would never understand. Like, why is she not understanding him? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, translation is an extremely fraught thing. So you you always have to make choices about what you translate, how you get things mm-hmm. across. And I think you mm-hmm. know, make, choosing to put some indication in the way they wrote the text there, so yep. you know they can get the, the the cultural point across is a reasonable choice there. The only other way they would could have done it was put a note at the top saying like he's talking in a weird <laughs> accent. That's why. <what laughs> yeah. like, yeah. There's no other yeah. way to really get that across. To us, um, unless you are fluent in Japanese, right, right. or you you know that accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I had something else I want to say about it. Um, oh, I like the soundtrack a lot. I have a yeah, the soundtrack's I thought, really I nice. Very, really compliments. Very pleasant. Like, do like really worked for the moment. Yeah. So, so I was. I'm not talking about the opening ending, although I did like those too. But I mean, like, just the general like yeah, mood music, that, like the score. <laughs> there's music throughout the thing. Um, you know, some part of it. Felt, I felt like if it wasn't present, I would have a more grounded tone. But it was like music sort of countering the action. But some people are driven by music. Some people are driven by what they see or hear. So um, I, I, know, know, I just thought for it, me, fit, it fit well with what was happening on screen. Yeah, usually. it wasn't distracting, but it could also have been in sometimes just missing, and it would have been just fine. Cute opening, I thought, too. Mm-hmm. Like the, when they're clapping. <laughs> it's weird oh, the yeah. Harbinger of Springs in the opening because it's only in one episode for like five right. minutes. <laughs> but I guess he just maybe. I don't know why he's in there still. But. I thought he appeared in another episode as I well. I think so, yeah. Uh, there was the other character who looked kind of like him. The Veil of oh. Darkness. Yeah. This is the person who, like, turns day to night. 
behind the scenes and yeah. during the day she goes gets coffee at the cafe and goes well she got to do <laughs> yeah. it's not time to become night um, and you got the familiars I guess we haven't mentioned the familiars yeah, yeah, they play yeah. a pretty big part in the show as far know. yeah like I tend to be like oh do we need to have an anime mascot in every single show but these guys these some of them were I don't know I found them to be cute which is I guess the point of a mascot but they also like could communicate with the witches that mm-hmm. they were familiar with so like uh, Kenny being like was like an anthropologist or something. They said right, yeah, that was an, like, odd, <laughs> an odd choice. At the end there, in episode eleven or twelve, yeah. whichever one it was. Yeah. Um. I, but yeah, I don't know. I thought they were cute. They made fun sounds. But I don't know if I, they needed to be there. Yeah. I don't think they quite as much fit with the mascot character. No, no, I mean, no, they no. seemed appropriate because every witch had them as well. Right. So it yeah, it was much fit. more part of the world, part of the story. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. in UK he had the um, right. hamster. Oh, mispronounced it again. Yeah. Um. Had oh, the yeah, hamster. Al. I think they call him Al. That's right, Al. Yeah, Al, Al the hamster. <laughs> yeah. And then there was the uh, witches who owned the cafe had an Al, actually. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. The Definitely Al was cool. felt a bit of Harry Potter there. But the, <laughs> was the way the Al got the off, though, and like sort of walked across with the lanterns, they like, walked across the floor. Like It was like a long, it was like <laughs> a pretty long scene. Like it just it's yeah. Al just walking. I yeah. just started laughing. I don't know why. <laughs> like, this is, it like, gave him the letter and walked back, and it was gone. <laughs> Done and done. <laughs> so, so that's it. The next music video you do, you have to have that exact scene oh, happen. Yeah. Throughout. The owl, like the Energizer Bunny, just keep going and going and going through your music video. Um, I think we covered most of the characters. Um, uh, so do we, we didn't mention K much. She's oh, right, uh, yeah. Makoto's cousin. Uh, he's the older um, brother. Older brother. Yeah, uh, but they're about the same age. They're in the same class at school. Yeah, I thought he was all right. I yeah, thought he, all right. he always had a good comment to say. Usually that was fun. <laughs> yeah, he likes cooking. So uh-huh. he's uh, there's, there was definitely a very strong food thread in this show. Right, right. In which he was usually the one up in the kitchen cooking up. Yeah, uh, they didn't um, they didn't push really any romantic angles. Um, no, not at all. Could definitely no see hints, like really. they could have if they wanted to get K with now that was going to be like a thing, but they never that never came to be. They're right. just good friends, which I appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, guess what? A boy and a girl be good friends, not actually romantically involved. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. <laughs> but, More than one story in the world. Yeah, um, and I guess there's the the owners of the shop and then the ghost Hina yeah An- Anzu is the daughter of the yeah. owner of the shop white haired mm-hmm. witch um, and her mother she shows up not so much in the early part of the series right Anzu's mother they listed here so I don't know if she got a name and yeah then, I, I don't think and so and then Hina's the female ghost who's incredibly shy oh right right from the Meiji era <laughs> Meiji yeah yes Meiji yeah um yeah, that's yeah, that's the characters. That's the show. I mean, it's it's pleasant. I mean, it's it's yeah, really nice. It's I mean, w- watch an episode and you'll know if you like it from that episode. I'd say. Yeah, I think if you think this is a, applies to an anime club, this might be a pleasant thing to watch as a group. But not if it's a rambunctious bunch. I mean, right, if, yeah. you, if you've got people who are impatient, uh, this is a show that's not going to keep their attention. This is a show that goes at its pace and it sticks to its pace. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't like try to you know pander to people that want to see something every five minutes like crazy. You know, and if you're going to watch the first episode, wait till the end with the Mandrake because that's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but if you're going to watch one episode, the first episode's definitely the one to watch. Mm. Uh, what do you think? How do you think it wrapped up? Without spoilers, I thought it was okay to wrap up. Like, yeah, didn't really. Yeah, it didn't really. It, it just kind of, just kind of, kind yeah. of stopped. I yeah. felt. I mean, it wasn't really. There was no arc to this show. Yeah, they talked about how like she has to report her witch status to the committee or whatever they were talking about oh, at one yeah, point, yeah. but they never got to that. So yeah, and uh, I mean, you get the bit, this thread where Chinatsu uh, uh, wants to be wants a witch. to be a witch. Yeah, yeah. So there's a few things with that, but it's more like they're humoring her, right, as right, opposed right. to like t- doing taking anything seriously. Yeah. Well, you know, but they do follow up on the fact that they make the uh, the rope. Yeah, the yeah, rope. Right, yeah, right. So, yeah. It's like. Hey, can I be a witch? Well, ask your mother for first, and it's like, sure, why not? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the mother and the dad are very like, yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, they they yeah. obviously have known the witch side of their family for a while because they don't seem to be. They especially don't seem to be w- weirded out by anything that's going on in their house. No, <laughs> the nonsense. Um, yeah, uh, I, I agree, Paul. Pleasant is a good way to describe the show. Uh, did we mention the, uh, the the sister much? Actually, uh, Connie. I don't believe we oh, did no, mention no, no. her. Uh, that's uh, Makoto's oh, older right, sister. Right, right, yeah, she, yeah. She's always popping in and out, and then after, after a certain point, she just decides popping in and out is too much trouble, so she starts living at the house as well. Yeah. She's, uh, yeah, she's Makoto's older sister, extremely irresponsible, very fond of drinking with the old guys in town. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's that character. Like the drinking all the time kind of yeah. got a little tiresome. Like drinking and like drinking like four beers for lunch or something. Yeah, a little one. Note. Yeah, um, and and on another like sort of uh, character trait I thought was a little is a little overused in anime is like Makoto's like lack of sense of direction. I thought kind of came right. up too much, and I was like, yeah, I know there's that character in a lot of anime, mm-hmm. but you know, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, she's not right. good at directions, <laughs> but I uh, yeah. Other than that, though, I quite enjoyed it. I think it's mm. worth at least an episode of you. Mm-hmm. Sounds intriguing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely worth one episode, for sure. So, yeah, I recommend people check out. I did watch the whole thing, not for the sake of having as a topic, but just because I was... Yeah, me too, actually. I was planning us to watch, like, four episodes, and then I kind of just kept watching through over the past two days. So. I must have liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Something must have kept me coming back. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's only 12 episodes, and that's probably going to be all we get. It's probably all we need. It's uh, licensed on Crunchyroll. There's a manga out there. There's at least four volumes out, and I believe it's still going. So I don't you know think if anyone's picked up the manga for English official release Not to the not. best of my knowledge, but I'm not 100% certain. <laughs> Uh, there's a second season I don't think I'll bother with the second season personally though like I've watched this I got what I feel like gain from it and I oh it looks like uh, Vertical Vertical has picked it up okay Okay, that's good to know interesting okay so links Okay, so if you want to check out Flying Witch, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out OGLink.com slash new to do so yeah yeah, that's a thing. Um, okay, well, thank you guys for uh, for the recommendation, I suppose. Um, so, for all the things we mentioned here, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net, or just ognetworks.tv. That's basically where all things are going to be living. Um, so, what are we going to do next week? Good question. You'll just have to find out when we podcast next, which is... Wednesday. For feedback, you can hit us up at otaku.generation at gmail.com or by Skype, Otaku Generation one word, or by phone, 610-628-3154 or 206-965-8154 or 484-393-1405. If you hit that last one's Google voicemail, you might potentially have to hit something like pound after the message to make sure that it picks you up and records. Okay, so we have a fortune and we have an appendage, and I fear to ask, but I will. So what's the appendage going to be? I'll just go with the flying witch in between the sheets. Uh, see, you have the disadvantage because you're reading a fortune. <laughs> okay, so what do we just go... Just go. Okay, so you are almost there with a flying witch in between the sheets. <laughs> You're almost there. Don't stop. Don't give up. <laughs> yeah. You'll get there. <laughs> and you know where there is. Yeah. See y'all later. I was walking my dog, Pom Pom. He started growling and pooping all over the place. And then I saw it. And it was a bear holding a shark.